I am going to go ahead and mark some cutouts here on our uh, design. So we'll go back to part design and we're gonna go do another XY plane. Now this is going to be for just a few little holes and cutouts here, mainly for the switch, the hex nut, and of course the fan uh, holes as well. What I'm gonna do here is I'm going to make a few squares which can be done with this tool very simply. And we are going to be a, doing a grand total of eight of them. I'm just, uh, doesn't matter for size at the current moment. Okay, so this is gonna be our basic fan grill here. Each one of these uh, things will be 10 millimeter tall, gap to about five millimeter apart. I'm gonna go ahead and start defining these here. So 10, they'll all be the same height, at least on the Y axis. X axis, they'll be a little bit different. At least the top and the bottom ones will be a little shorter or a little, uh, not as wide. Now I'm just gonna gap them a bit. We'll do our blue lines again. So let's go ahead and do a straightening, straightening constraint. We'll do this about five, equal these out here. So these bad boys are gonna be 90, and then these are going to be 120. So we'll just select one line out of these individual squares. Looks like I might have screwed up somewhere. Just gonna go ahead and define the uh, dimensions here, these bottom ones, might as well get them out of the way. And I'm gonna go ahead and cap this by about 10. And I have to manually define these, so I'm not gonna equal them like I'll do with the others. Okay, I'm gonna space these first, and then I'll see if they do their weird, like, I don't know why it's behaving like that. Okay, looks like I got it to work that time. <laughs> no clue why that decided to misbehave like that. I just simply need to define this. 7.5 is our measurement for that. Five. 15. Okay, there we go. So that piece, don't know why it's like intersecting so much with that bottom deal. This one needs to be 14. There we go. Now we'll need to go ahead and do a couple of holes for the screws for the fan. And these will be placed 105 millimeters apart from each other. So we're gonna do that here first. So we'll do a point to point measurement and that is 105. So then you just go ahead and do this nonsense here where you're like equal. And then you point it where it needs to be. 15, okay. So this one's 15 as well. Now we just need to define the radius of these bad boys. I think I need like a 2.5 radius. I wanna go ahead and uh, create a circle for our switch. That has to be a uh, six millimeter diameter, so three for radius. So go ahead and define that. Now I don't know the exact placement right now. That's kind of up for dispute here. As long as like this switch can actually be toggled on and off without you know conflicting with everything else, this will be our hex nut holder. So this will be a quarter inch 20 nut. So our radius is 3.25 for that. It's gonna be about 140. And then it's gonna be our halfway point, 67.5. So we are good to go on this particular set here. So now we have our sketch. What I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to undo this common. We're gonna toggle the visibility on that. And we are going to go ahead and select this face right here. The reason being is that all those, those other holes weren't really mapping to that tiny face area we had initially. So we had to do that before we go ahead and merge those two objects. You'll see here in a moment what exactly I mean. Okay, so now as you can see, this entire face covers all of these objects, including these two dots up here. Could have separated them, but I just went ahead and knew all the measurements. So this will take less steps and look a little cleaner in terms of all the hierarchy. We can go ahead and do our pocket through all. Let's go back to part and we'll go ahead and do intersection. So now it's starting to look more like the other model, as you can see here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get right to the doozy issue that I uh, that pretty much made this entire video a few days late, which is creating a hexagon. I kid you not. So we'll go ahead and get right into it. X, Y plane, uh, where that little circle was in the middle up here. And this is gonna be its own shape, just because it's, uh, it can't, it's not 
just a pocket where it cuts through everything. So normally you would use this hexagon tool. However, I cannot get this to work properly. So I am not going to use the hexagon tool. Reason being is for some weird reason, it doesn't allow you to actually bind it on the X and Y axis. It once you do so, one or two things either happen. One, it either refuses to cooperate and stays put in whatever place you dropped it initially. So if, it, if I put it over here and tell it to go over here, it's gonna stay right here. Two, uh, actually there's three things. So the second one is it'll like implode on itself. I think it's just because I don't have it constrained properly. And then three, it just disappears. So yep, as you can see, I've drawn a basic hexagon shape right now. It hasn't been clearly defined as of yet, but we're gonna go ahead and go, go to our, we're gonna blue our lines and I'm gonna go ahead and create a middle, a center point and that center point will connect to all of the outside points of our hexagon. So I'm gonna go point to point, and this is going to be 6.75. So I'm gonna click these, just all six of them, equals, still a little bit janky. Technically, these inside lines are equidistant in terms, or from point to point, as the outside lines. However, if you click all the lines and make them equal, things get weird, and it doesn't work. So we have to go ahead and at a different time, click all of the inside blue lines we have created and hit the equal key. And there we go. It works. Uh, never mind. <laughs> oh, maybe it's this rogue uh, constraint here. There we go. See, so yeah, I was that rogue constraint. I don't know why hexagons are so buggy, but yeah, once deleting that, it made things it was like falling apart like it's just literally like the epitome of an unstable program at that point now you're thinking hey just like this middle point because that's kind of like the reference that we had for that circle and you want to make it equal to that nope i can't do that so i'm going to show you all how we're going to define this here i'm going to i'm going to use this for the y-axis defining that because it's more closer to the center and that one is just going to simply be 140 so we're going to do 6.75 divided by 2, which is 3.375. And we're going to 67.5, subtract that essentially. So 64.125 is our number here. And it's stuck. Thank goodness. I'm going to up that to 20 because I think it has to cut through a lot. And I'm going to go ahead and raise this bad puppy here by a couple millimeters. Now I just need to make like a little chasm for our uh, filter to fit into here. So with that, it's just pretty simple. We're gonna go ahead and just do a uh, cube. This particular cube, it will be 130 by 130 by 10. And then that particular cube is going to be 2.5 for X. Uh, four raised for that. I think that's it really. So what I want to go ahead and do is I want to go ahead and uh, do a bit of a fillet on these three edges here of two millimeter. That way it'll give it a bit of an arch, give the uh, printer a fighting chance of doing that over arc without it being too extreme. Plus it'll give it a mo bit more uh, strength. So this is exactly the size of our filter. I don't want all this overarching stuff. So we have a little uh, opening here, chasm, if you, if you will, be about 120 millimeter by 120 millimeter, 7.5, and then 7.5. Okay, it looks like it just uh, 14 will be the height on that. So we just have one more element to add in, we'll be done, which is our little cylinder here for our radius here, 6.5. Four. Then our height, we'll go ahead and just do 120 to account for everything. We want to go ahead and rotate on the Y axis. So we'll go to axis. We'll do one for Y, zero for Z, and then do a 90. For X, we'll do a 7.5 just to center it up a bit. We'll need to adjust it a little bit as we get it up in the model. So it'll actually be 190 for our Y. And then it looks like a 10.5. I want one of the ends to be capped off just so the spool doesn't fall out. I don't think it will. I think it'll be a relatively tight fit, but I'm just um, being a little bit over precautious. 
There we go, just off, just by two millimeter, which is by 12, so it's 10 to stick in that hole there. So we got that, that, and that. Let's make sure we have all of our shapes together. I'm gonna go ahead and union these together, and then I'm gonna cut them from this particular shape, and boom, there you have it, folks. That is our solder holder. So this, like I said, this is the uh, first part of it here. I'm gonna print out it and test it a bit. I might reinforce this a bit. I think it's pretty much good. It's four millimeters, so it's relatively thick. If I print it with a relatively solid infill, or at least a solid uh, wall, or actual amounts of outer layers for the print, I think I should be okay. So I'm just gonna test around with that. It's a good little uh, test to make sure here. I don't think it'll take too long. So of course, as always, we'll go ahead and save it, make sure nothing bad happens, select our object, our final object, and then we'll go ahead and export it to an STL, and I'll go ahead and plug it in Simplify 3D and print it out. And that's pretty much about it here, folks. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button. Consider subscribing and check out some other videos here as well as have a great day.